Hello and welcome to this tutorial on problems 11 through 15 on your eighth homework assignment. Uh, in this particular problem, you're asked to do using more circle everything that you were asked to do or could have done in the earlier problems using the formulas that uh, the book has provided for stress transformation, but to do it this time using Moore's circle, which as I've noted in some of my other videos to help you with your homework here, um, this is my preferred way of uh, going about solving problems in stress transformation in 2D. Uh, I just simply prefer to draw the circle, remember how to draw the points, uh, remember how the geometric transforms work. And if I can do that, um, it's no memorization at all uh, to, to deal with Moore's circle. The only thing you have to memorize is the sign convention that you're going to use to draw more circle. Everything else is a very straightforward way of, of dealing with stress transformation. So you don't have a whole lot um, that is difficult to come up with. So you're, at, you're given a stress element, uh, much like the one you see at the top of the page. And, in, uh, and you're asked uh, in, this pro, uh, in this question series, Find sigma max, sigma min, tau max in plane, uh, the principal planes, and the plane of max shear. So let's just draw more circle for this particular stress element. Uh, I've got 40 megapascals pushing in, 70 uh, on the x face, 70 pulling out, so positive 70 for sigma y, negative 40 for sigma x. And since my shear stresses, point to the upper right hand corner and the lower left hand corner uh, when we consider everything that would be acting on the other side of the element uh, because this element has to be in equilibrium and things have to be equal and opposite so although we don't draw them they are implied by the necessity to keep the element in vertical horizontal and moment equilibrium uh, we now have everything that we need. So this is positive 25 in shear stress, but when we draw more circle, we'll talk about how that uh, works out to draw the circle. So I need one point for the X face and one point for the Y face to draw more circle. And when I do that, I end up with uh, the use of the point for the X face of negative 40 and negative 25. So it's this point right here. And then for the Y face, I have the point of positive 70 and negative 25. Oh, sorry, sorry, positive 25. So this, uh, this would be spinning the element clockwise, and that's what we have for positive for shear stresses with more circle. So I have this point, 70, 25. This is sigma y and tau x, y. So this one's the positive one. That's the negative value of tau x, y. All right, so all we have to do is figure out what the important points on the circle are. With this one, you can definitely drop your right angle, do your right triangle trigonometry, what, figure out what the radius is, um, figure out what two theta principle is, and for this angle, you're gonna have to rotate the diameter clockwise. That means this is a negative angle. Uh, you could uh, add 90 degrees to that to get the positive value for theta p. And then for the shear angle, I know that I'm going to have to rotate the diameter up to the vertical to get the maximum shear. So if I figure out the shear angle here, it's going to be a positive number for two theta shear. Of course, theta shear is half of that number. And then uh, the radius, of course, is just tau max. If I want to know sigma max, it's sigma average plus r. 
and then sigma min is sigma average minus r. And the values are just going to be an exercise left to you. So once you get a little practice with more circle, um, it's easy, it's repetitive, it works the same way every time. There's nothing to memorize. So don't stress out about the stress transformation equations. Um, not a difficult thing to do once you know how to draw the circle and draw it reliably. And that's all for this video.